So in this video, we're going to take a very quick look at Azure Resource Locks. This simple feature of Azure can help you save a lot of your work. Uh, and by a save a lot of your work, I mean that it can help you in not screwing something up. So say, for example, in Azure, you actually had a resource group. And inside that resource group, you have spent a lot of time developing and building and configuring a solution. Maybe you've got a virtual machine in there. Maybe you've got a storage account in there. Maybe you've got something in here like um, a VNet or even a huge SQL database, whatever it might be. Now, if you come in here and accidentally delete a resource group within Azure, what's actually going to happen is not only is the resource group going to get deleted, but also all the services that live inside that resource group are also going to get trashed. You might think to yourself, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to accidentally click that button. You might. You might delete something that you think needs to be deleted, but in reality, turns out you actually need it later on. Or you might actually be running a command, maybe a PowerShell command, or maybe an Azure CLI command that might not do what you expect it to do and might accidentally delete more than you expect it to delete. Maybe you're trying to automatically delete resources inside Azure and you've messed up a search or you've messed up a where. That's where these resource locks actually come in. And as a resource lock can very quickly be applied to a resource group or actual resources inside it, then you can apply a read only resource lock or you can apply a no delete resource lock to a resource. And that means that even if you over here are even top level global admin and you are God tier, you will not be able to come in here and delete a resource group until you actually remove one of these locks. They can be very, very easy to put on and they can save your butt if you are in a bit of a pinch and accidentally attempt to delete something you shouldn't. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a resource group in here and I'm going to call that resource group temp. And I'm just going to drop this resource group into UK South. If we review and create that, it doesn't take too long to deploy. In fact, it's already done. Let's deploy something to that resource group that isn't going to take too long. Let's go and deploy a virtual network just for the purposes of this demo on locks. So inside this resource group, I might choose temp and I might call this VNet1. I'm just being very creative with my VNet names. I'm going to leave everything default because I'm not going to use this VNet for anything other than to prove the point that resource locks does and does not work or does or doesn't work. So let's wait for that deployment to be completed. And let's pop up to that resource now. So here I've just got a virtual network, but we don't want to play with that. We want to go back into resource groups and we want to look at that temp resource group. So if we look inside the resource group itself, go and refresh that and hope our resource appears. A couple of refreshes and it does. I now have the ability to delete this resource group and by typing in temp would delete everything inside that resource group. But if I come in here and I come all the way down to this option to locks down here, so this lovely little option down here, if I click on locks, I can go and add a couple of locks to this environment just through this lovely add button up here. And I could choose this lock name as for example, no Dell. My lock types are read only and delete in here. So if I choose this delete option, I won't be able to actually um, delete this resource group or any resources inside it, but I would still be able to modify those resources. Whereas if I chose read only, I wouldn't be able to delete this resource group and I would not be able to even modify the resources that are inside it. So if you set up a situation where you've got a whole environment configured and deployed into our resource group and we don't want to change anything because it's a house of cards and we're worried that if we pull something out, everything is going to fall down. We can set that to read only, but I'm just going to pop this on delete for the moment. So notice that delete resource lock is actually in, actually on and applied. Now, if I come back and attempt to delete my resource group, remember I am global admin. I have permission to do everything and I go to delete that temp resource group. It will deny me from doing it. So it gives me this ability to say this resource has no locks. If I refresh it, it does have a lock. Remember, refresh is your friend. Refresh this here is the most important button you've got in the entirety of Azure. If I just drop back momentarily, we should be able to see here that delete resource group failed. 
it will bounce us in and it says to us, okay, I have to remove this. So I have to delete the resource group inside here. So not delete the resource group, delete the resource lock from the resource group. Now the resource locks is removed. I can drop back in that temp resource group and I can delete the whole resource group and it won't complain about it. That's all that locks are. That's all that locks do. Locks do not do anything particularly important. You can imagine them like a flag sitting upon resources that you have made to essentially say, do not delete this. Do not modify this. This thing is working fine. And this is part of the critical components of our business or of our organization. And that is locks.